Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. Mini Park was a game I saw at the Dice Tower Con. I think it was Meeple Source was selling some of these Japanese-based games. I bought a couple of them. So kind of what, what looked neat. First, I'll be honest with that Mini Park was a theme park game, and it wasn't. It was a game about building a miniature park, or a park that you would go like a local county park here in the States. So what you're doing on this, you're laying a tile, you have different characters, you have different powers. What's particularly interesting with this one is, is you don't know which powers you're going to get at the beginning of the game. Taking a power is actually an action in the game. It's a turn, if you will. So if I choose to take the cat, I'm going to score the cat, but... You know, when do I want to take that? Because he's only going to score in certain ways. I, I got to get the tiles in certain ways to make that make sense. If I do that a little bit too much, somebody else is going to see it and grab it before me. But if I grab it too soon, then you're going to make sure that his scoring mechanism doesn't work. So there's like a push-pull, almost like the minute of like, when do I start going after points and stop building up this engine? But this one's like, when do I grab that scoring mechanism versus laying the tiles down. And you know, and the more you know this game, the more strategic it will be. The downfall of this game to me is also a plus to it. It's quick to play, it's easy to play, there's not a lot of tiles, doesn't take up much table space, and that's gonna be a pluses for a lot of people. And if those are pluses to you, this is game is for you. This is great, you should take a hard, hard look at this game. For me, it's something I've played a lot, there's a couple different versions. The rules are a little wonky to me inside of it. Uh, at the end of the day, it wasn't something I was going to keep for a very long time. It just wouldn't have enough crunch to it. I like crunchier games. Uh, the lighter game, it just made it very difficult to explain to people because I had to explain each of the powers that were going to be out, how they worked and operated. It was a little cumbersome for exactly what you're doing, which is just flipping a title and playing it at most point. I don't want to give the impression that it's a very deep game. It's it's not. But in the limited amount of, almost like Tiny Epic, in the limited amount of components you're giving, it's very deep for what you're given. For me, it's going to be a purge. It was, it was a keep for quite a while, but now that I'm making this video, it's going to be a purge. Here is Mini Park. You can see a very attractive cover, and I didn't know much about this game when I got it, but this cover really drew me in. I just thought it was a very, very, very beautiful cover. Kind of a portable box, you know, probably in that little place where it can't fit in your pocket, but could fit in your bag pretty easily. Going to open it up. You're going to get some nice little tiles in here. You're going to get some unique meeples. You can see a cat and a fish, and there's a little kid. And you can see that all fits nicely in a little small bag. That'll be your scoring. You're going to have a number of victory points, which are just little chips with just numbers on. They're okay. And a bunch of tiles with different stuff on it. Very, very nice here. It does come with a little mini expansion, which I'll show you how to play once we get inside of it. And then my copy had... Japanese rules inside, but had this attached to it, which was all in English, so I could read it. Very portable. Everything fits in here. Could the box have been a little bit smaller? Yeah, it definitely could have been a little bit more portable in here, and, and we got rid of all that if it wanted to. And honestly, I think maybe half a point would have been better for that, because at this point, I can literally just stick this in my pocket and go play a game. So here's the rule book for... Mini Park, very small, very small font. The rule book is very tiny. Up here, you can have all the components listed out with pictures, which is much appreciated. And setup will be down here, and I will kind of show you. Now, I have a little bit of problem because this shows you the advanced game setup, and most people probably don't want to start with the advanced game, so it's a little confusing, and I was a little confused by that. The flow of play over here, it's okay. I was a little unsure about the scoring. It took me a few times through to kind of understand it. Yes, it's very clear when you read it, but memorizing it all and referring back to it. Placing a character and how that works. Once again, here's the end of game scoring. I was a little bit confused by the scoring at the end, how the objective down here worked. There's just one sentence on a whole lot of explanation about it and when to use it. You have the advanced rules kind of stuck in here. It, it wasn't my favorite. Expansion tiles explained on the back. That was fine. It wasn't my favorite rule book. It probably gets a 5 out of a 10. I mean, it's a simple game, but I don't want to say, hey, this rule book gets a pass just because the game is simple. This rule book didn't do a great job of explaining the game. I'm going to start off by showing you the basic game. I'm a little unsure by the rule book whether the objective cards apply in the basic game or not. I think you can take them out and be just fine, or you can include them in to make the game a little bit more competitive. You start out with a random tile. Any one of the tiles will be fine. It will start out as a starting tile. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain this. But for the most part, you're going to have two tiles that are face up, and then you're going to have a deck of tiles that will be available. If you ever play Ticket to Ride, kind of think of that. 
You can choose one of the two face-up ones, or you can take the, one, the top of the deck card, and that will be your tile for the round. So on your turn, you have one of two actions. You can place one of these tiles to the main board, refilling the options that you have here for the next player, and then score based on the scoring, which I'm going to get into in a minute. Or you can choose one of these characters. But if you choose one of these characters, then you cannot pick a tile for the round. Then on your next turn, you will have to. So you're going to be able to choose one of these during the game. And that's going to be a huge mechanism in the game is when do I grab this? When's the best time to score this? Because it's going to be a little push and pull here with the other players on the scoring. So when you choose one of these, you take whichever one you want. You get the little meeple, and then you have to apply it right then and there, and you would place it. All of these tiles are going to coordinate to end of game scoring. I'm going to go over these in just a minute. Let me jump back over here. So when you place a tile, depending on the type of tile that you are placing, it will do different things. For the road tiles, let's say you had something maybe set up like this when you were placing your tile. For the road tiles, you're going to get one point for each road that you connect to and one point for each nature tile. So because I'm placing this one, I would get one for this for the road and one extra point for this, and I would immediately go ahead and take my two-point victory charts. For the nature ones, if you're placing these nature ones, which are either one of these forests or the ones with the fishy on it, you're going to get a point for each nature tile it's attached to and each one of these tiles with different things on it. So let's say that this had been played in this regard. I would get, if I'm placing this, one point for this and one point for this tile with the bench. The only rule really is, is when you're placing this, you can't block a road. A road can't go to anywhere. So when you're placing it, you couldn't go like this and block off a road. The road has to keep growing until it comes to a natural conclusion. Sometimes it may be beneficial for whatever reason that you'll want to close off one of these roads as quickly as possible for strategic purposes and that may be what you want to do to keep somebody else from scoring and that doesn't exactly work but I think you get the general idea you cannot block a road it's the only rule with that so let's talk about the scoring this is where things can get a little bit complicated so whenever you take one of these you're always going to take two of them and when you have these these are very easy to explain is that whatever the fish scores you're going to score half so that means you're going to score for the businessman, which is the black guy, and half whatever the fish has. So if you feel like somebody's getting a lot of points, that's great. Go in and take their objective, which gives you a half points. You don't steal the half a point. From them. So they score 40, you score 20, but they still score 40. That's just an example. So all of these are going to work the same way, the green ones. And these are single-sided. They will always work the same way that when you take one, you're going to get half the points. So it's going to be a little bit of strategy involved in that. Which which one of these do I take? I want to take this yellow one, but green's scoring a lot. Or maybe the cat is scoring a lot, so you want half those points because somebody else already took the cat. So that's all going to play into it. So the child, the working man, and the cat will all work the same way. When you have these and you choose the character, you will place it out. The cat will go on bushes, which you can see right here has a bush attached to it. So let's say it was on this road. Let's say that's not there. Then you would place a cat on here. At the end of the game, the cat is going to score two points for every bush connected to that road. The child is going to work the same way, except for he's going to work on playgrounds, which is right here, this little spot right here. You can see kids playing on the playground. And he's going to score two points for every playground on the road. And the working man is the last one. He's going to be on park benches because he likes to stop and read his newspaper. And you're going to score two points for each bench on your road, whether he's on or not. He's on the road. So in this case, there's two benches, so he's going to score four points. One bush, he would score two, and he would score two, keeping that in mind. That's the basic game. The bird is always placed on a forest tile, and he will score points for each forest tile that's connected. So if the game ended something like this, you would get two, four points, you're not going to score that one because it's not connected to this forest. The fish kind of works the same way. He's going to get, if this was set up like this at the end of the game, two points for each tile. That's four points. He won't score for this one because it's not part of his pond. The cyclist gets put on any road, and he gets one point for each tile on the road. So one, two, three, four. If it was something like this was set up, where there's a road one over here, he's not on that road. So one, two, three, four. He's going to score four points in this kind of setup. 
So that is the basic game and the basic tiles. Now it's important to note that the basic tiles are all on one side. You'll see they're very easy to see. Now at the beginning of the game, if you wanted to play the advanced version, you would flip each of these over before, you know, at the beginning of the game as part of setup, and then they're going to score a little bit differently. The advanced side is going to score a little bit differently. First thing you have to understand is the concept of regions. So a region will always be like here, divided by the roads. Think of farmers and Carcassonne or whatnot. So the roads are going to split off and create regions. So this would be a region, and perhaps that would be a region. The child, when placed in the advanced game, will score for each one in his region. So if he was placed here, there is just one playground in his region, so he will score three points for that region. If he was over here, once again, there's only three in his region, but there could potentially be more if it was like this, and he would score six points because it's divided by a road, he would have three and six. So that's how the child is going to score. So the working man's gonna work a little bit differently now. So he's gonna get for every road that has a bench. So there's a bench on this road, a bench on that road, not one here, not one here, not one here, gonna score three points, so three and six. So you want the benches to not be on a single road that's very long, you want them to split up as many possible. This would be three, six, nine. In addition, you're going to score three points if the working man is on the longest possible road. In this case, this is one, two, three tiles of road. If he was here, you would not score the bonus. If he was here, you would. And that's worth an additional three points. So the cyclist is going to score a little bit differently in the advance game. He's going to score one point for each tile between one and six of the road he makes up and two for everything over seven. So from my reading of this, if he was on this one, he would score one, two, three points for those three tiles. And if it was longer, then he would score more, in this case, four. Now, if this row was to get longer than seven, each tile after seven would be worth two points. That's my understanding. I wasn't sure if this meant two is for everything over seven, or if it was two points for each tile over seven. We played as two points for every si over seven. The rules make no clarification. The next one is the bird. You can see it has a three point here on him, and it's probably the most complicated one. So when you get the bird, you will press him out. And then what you'll be able to do is you can move him up to seven areas. So you count the one you're on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you touched one, two, three, four forest, which you get three points for each one is 12 points. Where if he had moved here, one, the one you're on, two, three, four, five, six, seven, couldn't quite reach that, would be one, two, three, times three is nine. So that's how the bird is. He's going to fly over and look for trees and forests to, I don't know, live in or eat in. And that's how he's going to score his points. The fish is another one that's a little bit complicated to understand. When you get him, you're going to put him in some water. And then you will multiply the number of fish by the number of tile. Keeping in mind, the fish itself counts as one. So even though there's two on the tiles, he makes three times two. He would score six points there. If you put him over here, one, two, three, four, and he counts as one, five times two is 10. So that's how the fish is going to score. So the cat is probably the most complicated one for me to use in the score. So let me try to explain how he works. You will count the number of characters in his area. So one, two, and the cat is one. So that'd be three times the number of bushes, one, two. So that would be six, and then you would add four for a total of 10. So you take how many characters there are, one, two, three, times the number of bushes, which is kind of like the fish, and then you add four to that total, and that's how you will score the cat. Without question, the advanced game is much harder to explain the scoring, and I highly recommend starting with the basic, at least through your first couple plays, or if you're adding somebody new to the game, I highly recommend sticking with the basic side at least once until you flip over and utilize the advanced side. Who should buy this game? Anyone who likes light, light games, who likes uh, those light but still kind of crunchy games who like um, tile laying games going to be big. If you like games, any game that like a pub game doesn't take up much space at all, this will definitely be it. You can take this to a pub, have a couple pints with somebody, and play a game on the table. This would work brilliantly for that. You know, maybe if you want to play something with your kids, I would probably say 8 to 10 up because of the different powers they need to be able to the grok that. Otherwise, you're just going to destroy them in it. So it's not just knowing what they do. Okay, this is what it does. It's being able to comprehend the strategies that go into them. Not not truly that deep. You know, we're talking about Agricola or 
you know, a, a, a starter game. But 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 getting into that level of just we're having this added complexity past Carcassonne, okay? A uh, small space though is going to be very appealing to people. Going to be perks for us. Not enough here for what I was looking for, but I did have a lot of fun in the plays that I did get.